everybody. Good afternoon. I apologize again. Yesterday I was not on, but I did have to work. Um, to further notice, I probably will be doing these on Sundays uh, at 3 for the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll probably do a event thing I'll fix up today, so it'll be a reminder for everybody. Because um, I'll be working a couple of Saturdays, so we'll make it for Sunday at 3. Um, in the meantime, we're going to get started. Uh, my first article today is going to be on Therefore Encourage. <clears throat> Therefore Encourage. And it's by Arlene Pelican. Then also I have an article, Dear Mama, I've seen that look before. And that's by Maggie Cooper. And then I have um, A Prayer to Remember. The Power of the Resurrection by Victoria Rylolin. Don't know if I pronounced that right, but we'll work on it. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. We give you all the honor and glory, Lord, right now. Lord, we just... You're an awesome, awesome Father. And we thank you. Again, we praise you and give you all the glory, Lord. And I pray right now that the word... The people here today in this message is strictly from you. Move me aside, Lord. Only what you would want them to hear from you. Um, Lord, I just thank you for blessing my life and my family. And Lord, uh, I know you'll continue doing, even though it's been a roller coaster ride at some times. Um, Lord, I ask that you just be with everybody that's listening. And I ask for healing spiritually, mentally, and physically for all, Lord. And we just put it all in your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's get started here. <clears throat> all right, the first one, Therefore Encouraged by Arlene Pelican, says today's truth. And she's uh, referring to 1 Thessalonians 5 11. It says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. It says, and this is Miss uh, Arlene talking. She says, when my father-in-law passed away at the age 93, we held a celebration of life. Family members and friends shared stories of the many ways dad had impacted their lives. My husband James talked about how his father had taught him a solid work ethic. Dad was in eye doctor and he had a particular habit before stepping into his private practice. He would pick up the trash around his building. That made an impression on James, watching his father, the doctor, pick up the trash every day. Dad also instilled a love of learning in his kids. While other boys received presents like video games, James received a dictionary and a bookshelf. The words of affirmation and appreciation poured out lavishly during the celebration of life ceremony, and rightfully so. It's certainly fitting to speak praise at a memorial service and special occasions like retirement parties or birthdays. We have a little tradition around birthdays in my home. My kids always know it's coming, but they let me do it anyway. I have everyone around the table say something they appreciate about the birthday person. I love words of affirmation, so this fills my cup big time. <clears throat> a birthday is a wonderful annual reminder to express love and appreciation. But you don't have to wait for a birthday or a memorial service to build someone up with kind, truthful words. Today's truth reminds us to... Encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Here, Paul is com complimenting the church of Thessalonica. You are encouraging each other. Keep that up. Now, it says, therefore, encourage one another. And when the Bible says, therefore, you see what happens beforehand to merit the, the therefore. In this passage, Paul is reminded the believers that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. We are not in darkness and we are to be sober in light of his coming. We are going to live with God forever. Therefore, encourage one another. We can live with great hope. No matter how bleak the week, 
The future is as bright as the promises of God. Encourage each other with hope-infused words. Maybe you're not sure what to say or who to say it to. Paul continues in verses 12 and 13 to show us who to encourage. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who <clears throat> admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Take a minute this week to encourage your pastor, small group leader, children's worker, or the volunteer that prepares communion at your church. Notice those who faithfully work to minister to others. Share your appreciation lavishly and frequently. If you've never done ministry work, you know it can be hard to keep going year after year. That's why the power of encouragement is so needed. Paul also tells us to encourage the disheartened in verse 14. Who do you know that has suffered a recent disappointment or loss? Take a moment to send a text, a note, or a call with encouraging word. A kind word can be a reminder that things won't always be so bleak. In Acts 4.36, we are introduced to Joseph, a Levite of Cyprus, but you probably don't recognize this Joseph. You probably know him as Barnabas, the name the apostles gave him, which means son of encouragement. Barnabas sold a field he owned and bought the mo brought the money to support the ministry of the disciples. Not only did he, did well, excuse me. Not only did Barnabas encourage others with his finances, but he also encouraged people by believing in them. It was Barnabas who brought Saul, which is Paul, to the apostles in the first place. Without Barnabas' stamp of approval, who knows how Paul's story would have turned out. We have a bright future. Christ is coming again. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, let us encourage our brothers and sisters to keep laboring for the gospel let our words bring comfort to the brokenhearted and become fuel to keep others going in ministry. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all your precious promises. Place on my heart the person you want me to encourage today and give me the words to say in Jesus' name. So, you know, think about today who might need encouragement and make a point to encourage them this week, him or her. And then your life who encourages you and be intentional about being around that person whether a cup with a cup for a cup of coffee or a service opportunity so be very encouraging to others you never know what kind of difference you make okay now we're going to read the one <clears throat> Okay, it's Dear Mama. I've seen that look before. All right, here's one for mamas. And this was by Maggie Meadows Cooper. <clears throat> she writes, I have seen that look on your face before. That time your child totally burped while the Sunday school teacher was praying and proceeded to have an ugly attitude when asked to stop. The time your two-year-old fell on the grocery store floor, rolling and flailing, like screaming like a wild banshee. The time your tween daughter talked back to you in front of a group of important women. The time your child colored all over the wall while your boss was standing at the door talking to you and watching him. The times you tell your children it's time to go and you wait and wait and wait and wait. As others watch in judgment of how you will handle this disobedience. I know what it looks like because I have been there myself. Me too. It's a mix of exasperations, anger, impatience, embarrassment, guilt, shame, and frustration all rolled into one. And it stinks. You don't like having that look on your face or feeling the way you do any more than I do. But if you have kiddos, it has happened before, and it will happen again. So hang in there, and as you're hanging on, think about this. Your child's behavior is not necessarily a reflection of your parenting. 
And I'm going to read that again. Your child's behavior is not necessarily a reflection of your parenting. You can be the most disciplined, retuned. Um, yeah. King talk now. Routined on top of everything mom in the world. And your children will still misbehave. And do you know why? Because they are little sinners. Like their big sinner mamas. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Psalms 51.5 Y'all, the Bible tells us we came into the world with sin in our hearts. We are not inherently good, Paul says. Paul says, and I know that nothing good lives in me that is my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Romans 7.18 And that's why we need Jesus. And that's why our little people need Jesus too. So what do we do with that? Do we need to stop discipline to the best of our ability and leading our babies? Uh, hold on. I got hit the wrong button. Leading our babies the best way we know how? Of course not. But we do need to cut each other some slack. I have been known to go to great lengths in order to make a trip to the grocery store, or any store for that matter, by myself. Do you know why? Is it so I won't spend as much money, partly, so I can get done quickly instead of making an extended vacation in the cookie or toy aisle? Maybe. But do you want to know the real reason? Because I don't want to face the, uh, the accusing eyes of others when my children misbehave. When one asks for something and I say no and the whining and complaining begin, when one is running and jumping and sliding down the dairy aisle to see how far he can make it on his socks, don't ask. When one refuses to sit in the buggy and manages to roll over the nasty floor, I don't want to feel the shame and embarrassment of feeling like I'm not enough. My husband and I discipline and lead and guide the best we know how, but y'all kids are kids. And by golly, some do things you can't ever prepare for. And I'll say it, some days I am too tired to care. I let things slip. I give too many chances. I try to change behavior instead of their hearts. And they misbehave. But my days are not all bad. Some days I go to the store and they act perfectly. Very rare, but still. They stay by the buggy. They thank me for what I get them. They act kind to each other and don't make any embarrassing bodily noises or pull any boogers to rub on my arm. Only the two-year-old does that at this point. <laughs> and I'm tempted to pat myself on the back and be excited that I've got it all together, but I don't. And I can do more harm than good by thinking I do. So here's what I say. Let's band together. When you see that mama with that familiar look on her face, don't look the other way. And don't look at her like you pity her. Smile at her. Tell her you get it. It doesn't matter if you know her. Just say in passing, I feel you, girl. And if it is one of your friends, give her a hug and come beside her. If she's had enough, tell her to go take a break and step in for a few minutes. Tell her little whiner to go play and mom will be right back. Let the tantrum on the floor continue if need be. Tell that wild boy to cool it and head outside. But look on her with love, not judgment. Speak out of compassion, not condemnation. Listen thoughtfully, not pridefully offering your great advice on how your children behave. And most of all, point her to Jesus. Yes, dear ladies, come together. Encourage one another, help one another. Now a little something with Easter coming up. <clears throat> it says, a prayer to remember the power of the resurrection. Okay, I think I got this. It's by Victoria Riolano. It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's 1 Peter 1, 3. Easter could be the most overwhelming Sunday of the year for a pastor's wife. 
The weeks before Easter are full of planning, budgeting, and creating the perfect day for those who fill, will fill the pews. The truth is, Easter is the one day a year that even those who are not religious will venture into the local church. Some come to church out of tradition, others to enjoy the festivities of Easter egg hunts, special prizes, or at our church, the free family photos. Whatever the case, there is no doubt that the Sunday dedicated to sharing the good news of the resurrection can become clouded in meaningless programs in citywide competition to fill the seats. Deep down in my soul, I wonder each year, have we forgotten the power of the resurrection? The good news of Easter Sunday is not the perfect matching outfits or church celebrations, but in the remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Jesus did not die on the cross for a yearly holiday for an eternal celebration of each of us having an opportunity to go from death to life. What an honor to celebrate this daily. Jesus died so that if we repent and believe, we could accept the full benefits of the cross. Instead of paying the penalty of our sinful nature, the true joy of Easter is in recognition of the greatest gift ever bestowed, bestowed on to mankind, the gift of salvation. My prayer today is that we celebrate the resurrection every day, not just Easter. I pray we share the joy of what Christ has done as often as possible, not just part of a one-day celebration. May we take a heart in severity of what God has done rather than get lost in the commercialism. Go and share the gospel with anyone willing to listen. The message of the gospel will outlive our momentary celebrations. The knowledge and acceptance of Christ's resurrection truly have the ability to change lives forever. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for the finished work of the cross. I praise you for the resurrection that brings hope. I will have everlasting life. Teach me to acknowledge what you have done for the world through the salvation on a daily basis. Forgive me if I have neglected to share the gospel due to feeling incapable or uncomfortable. I pray for opportunities to share my faith, and I ask for boldness to tell others <clears throat> I pray for opportunities to share my faith, and I ask for boldness to tell others about the resurrection in Jesus name. Amen. So this Easter holiday, no matter what your frustration is, whether it's just life struggles. Whatever it may be, remember what Jesus done for us, but not just this day, every day, remember what our good Lord has done for us. Thank you all for joining me and thank you for listening. I pray that you have a blessed day. See you next week. Bye.